Welcome back, everyone. Today we've got Reese Witherspoon for our face reading. So as I always say, if you're new to the channel, please go to the 5-Minute Crash Course face reading video up here. That will give you a nice overview of how this works. But again, if you're a first-time viewer, please go watch that. So when I was looking at Reese Witherspoon, she is a case study in the fire element. The, fer the fire element is characterized by pointy features. So anything that comes to a point, there are specific areas on the face, but we're going to go through these. And moreover, when we see an element very dominant in someone's face, the larger working idea with any of this stuff with face reading is not for me to tell you about yourself. Most likely things that you will already know about yourself if I'm working with someone. It's not just me saying, oh, you're this way and the person nodding and saying, yes, I am. That's great. That's wonderful. We all want to hear about ourselves in some capacity. But when, when we see a, a predominance of an element in someone's face or we see these big dominant features, my job as the face reader, as the person who's guiding you towards life nourishment, or if I was working with Reese Witherspoon, is this idea that, yes, you have these attributes. Yes, you have these traits that we're seeing. And maybe you can confirm them for me. But the idea is you have to lean into the things that you naturally are. The things we carry, the elemental things that are seen on our face need to be embodied in our everyday life. That's the whole point of face reading. So my job is not just to kind of affirm and confirm that these things are present in your life. It's the larger working metric is you have to engage these things to stay healthy. Because if we're not, we're in a state of unnaturalness to a degree, right? We're not going to be doing the things that we're naturally wired to do. So that being said, let's take a look at Reese Witherspoon and the things that I saw that were really interesting, um, I think, in the big picture because she's just, she's got so much fire, it's kind of nutty. So the first thing you'll notice is that her features to a degree, and I think Reese Witherspoon is attractive, but her features, they compress a little bit. So her mouth is close to her nose. She doesn't have a particularly long philtrum. Her face, to a degree, the features are kind of condensed. And when we see that packed energy, when things kind of come and they're kind of close together, that's usually a fire attribute. We can also see this in the pointiness of her chin, the pointiness of her eyebrows. There's an, um, She has a little bit of the action-oriented eyebrows. Her eyes, when she smiles, they kind of angle up and we see these pointy-like features. But collectively, even the tip of the nose is kind of pointy. And so the other thing with fire that we're looking for is that when a person smiles, that things wrinkle up. So if you look at her face when she smiles, even a small smile, she gets these dimples that kind of show up. So we'll see this as, as I've said before, an attention marker, meaning that the person is to a certain degree in some capacity wired for attention. So she has these even when her face is at a relaxed smile of sorts. So fire element, again, present across the board. Now, the thing that's interesting, when we see a person with a lot of fire, the fire themes that, that go with that, okay, the elemental rhythms, the lifestyle rhythms are social activity, laughter, joy, ecstasy, bliss, social activity, being in environments with stimulation, being in spaces where we are activated, we're talking, probably laughing, probably having a good time. So you want to think quintessential fire elements are something where you are in the social sphere. You are probably being seen by people, connecting people, and everything that's fun and lively and spontaneous. These are the themes. So when we see a face like Reese Witherspoon, and she has a lot of these elements, or I'm sorry, a lot of the fire element being present in her face, what we're looking at is someone that is geared towards this. So in terms of life nourishment, when I look at Reese Witherspoon, she's a person who is obviously a movie star. She's on screen. She's doing all of these things. So in terms of people who naturally fit into that space, she is fulfilling that. Now, this kind of points to other people, other actors. One that came to mind was Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is a very attractive guy, but he doesn't have a ton of fire features per se. And that activity and that spontaneity, and you don't have to have a, you know, this, this big storehouse of fire to be an actor, but you can see that on his face, someone like that, that those rhythms are probably a bit more difficult. And if you read about Johnny Depp, he's definitely a bit more of a recluse and he has uh, a more introverted personality and those social metrics on his face are not as, as dominant. So it's not to say that 
if you know that that certain features are going to mean that you're going to be an actor that's not the way to think about it it's prob it's probably i think a better way to look at it is how do those features fit into relation to what you're doing and so i'm guessing johnny depp would probably have a bit more conflict internally with these things he still does it he still loves it but the way to think about these things is that these features are going to predispose you to certain rhythms if you engage those rhythms that's great they're going to help you stay alive longer they're going to nourish life they're going to nourish that which you naturally are and that's a good thing but that doesn't mean that if you don't have these features that you can't engage those things you still need to engage life you still need to activate all it really points to is that you might have a little bit more resistance in that process but resistance isn't always bad it just means that that's the way it's going to go for you we're all going to have resistance somewhere so with Reese Witherspoon the thing that I liked about her face was all these fire features she is in Hollywood she is a movie star but she has the markers of someone who is very playful. So the other big thing with the fire element, one of the markers that you can see on the face is someone who is capable of making a lot of facial features, someone who is good at making faces. So as I was scrolling through, there were a lot of pictures of Reese Witherspoon making a lot of quirky, weird faces. And so you can see in just a, a few of these as I cycle through, she has that capacity to mimic and to you know contort her face and to do weird things with the face. So if you have someone in your life who is able to make faces, who uses their face in a very expressive manner, a person who gets a lot of wrinkles when they contort and move their face, this is all f fire predisposition metrics. And that's the way to think about it and to look at it. So I think that's Great. You know, for someone like this who's doing this kind of thing, she fits very well. And she characteristically, you know, with fire element people, because their features scrunch a bit, they can be kind of like off center pretty or off center attractive because it's not always the technical symmetrical norm, but she, it works for her. She has a lot of charm and a lot of wit. And she carries a lot of something called sparkling peach luck, which is the fire element peach luck, which means that a person needs to essentially glow, be warm, be active, be social. And that's going to be the thing that will bring lucky scenarios into your life. The other thing that I found kind of interesting, which balances her out in some capacity is this big, broad, open forehead, which is a water feature. So you want to think in the elemental rhythms you know, water extinguishes fire. So you could say, well, that's an elemental conflict given how dominant her forehead is. It's also indicative of an open mind. But with all of her fire features, having that big, broad water forehead also sort of simmers or extinguishes a bit of her fire dynamics, which is not a bad thing. Typically, when we're looking at the five elements, you don't necessarily want an element that's going to extinguish or destruct another element like this one, fire and water. But because she has so much fire, that big solid water feature is sort of like a fail safe. It's something that kind of decompresses and lowers that fire element, but also balances it. So it's a, it's a nice harmony to see in her face. So the thing to remember again with these features is for yourself, if you're looking at people, the way you want to think about this stuff is that your features are sort of like a signpost. They're like a ding, 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 ding you need to engage the things that your face carries. And in addition to that, those lifestyle metrics expand, they extrapolate as you go out. So even in terms of feng shui, you know, if people work with me privately and I take them on as a lifestyle client for a prolonged period of time, I use that face as a template to build out their lifestyle parameters. For someone like this, if they want to augment their physical space, I would say Reese Witherspoon also would be a person that needs to have a lot of fire element themed things in her environment. She needs the warm, fiery colors. She needs activity. She needs some triangular shapes. She needs some things that emulate fire or that mimic fire because that will help that social dynamic, that stimulated part of her that needs that activation to, to live and to work and to do all of her things would be a good thing. The last little thing I noticed about her too is that she doesn't have a particularly strong philtrum. She's got a pretty short one. That's a fertility metric. And so we, we're looking for the length, the width, and the depth of the philtrum in terms of fertility. But I looked up, and it looks like she has some kids, didn't have any issue. And this is the reason I'm mentioning this is because, because you have a feature that technically by the book says maybe it's not going to be the best thing for you. It doesn't mean that you are not going to have kids. It just means that you might find some resistance in those areas. 
if a feature is not strong, but it doesn't mean that life does not flourish anyway. So in any case, this was my read on Reese Witherspoon. I am not doing a, a personal, or I'm sorry, a natural face, inner persona or public persona because I could not find a picture of her frontal not making a face, which is very characteristic of fire people. You will not see a fire person typically with a very stoic face. They have a lot of activity and a lot of movement. And as an actress looking for pictures of her, you'd think I'd be able to find a frontal picture. I wasn't able to. And I thought that's pretty fitting for someone with a lot of fire. I had the same problem with Willem Dafoe when I was looking for his face. It was very difficult because he's got a very fire crinkly face. So that's what it is. But that's my read on Weiss Witherspoon. If you guys would like me to read someone else, please let me know. And thanks for tuning in as always.